Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching and thanks for coming back. Well, as we all say, please press the thumbs up, like and subscribe and turn on the notification button so you can be notified when I post a new video. In this video, we are going to discuss now that you've decided that you need to see a financial advisor and you need advice, how do you know who you're talking to? How do you know who you're talking to says they are who they say they are? You know, how do you know that this is not another swindler that is going to swindle you out of your hard earned cash? Someone who's going to make false promises and tell you that they can make sure that you get the returns that astronomical returns. How do you know that this person is legit? So that is what we're going to discuss today. After you've established that, all right, I need to see a financial advisor and I need to make, you know, some financial decisions and I need someone to help me with this. The first step would be to obviously, okay, let's start here. How do you find a wealth manager? How do you find a financial advisor? How do you find someone who's going to assist you with your financial plan? So let's say you read a financial article and it's written by a wealth manager and then you decide hmm, this person makes sense and I like the way he's presenting, you know, in this article and it seems like he knows what he's doing. I'd like to get in touch and maybe he can assist me with my financial plan. Then you contact either the, you know, the publication and you ask for the financial advisor's details. And, you know, you get in touch. That's one way. Another way, especially within the independent financial planning brokerages, how it always, always worked is that you would, um, it's referral based, basically. So you would have a friend who is a client at a specific brokerage, and then they recommend, you know, that you go and see this financial advisor because he's great. He takes care of you and he's looked after your investment portfolio. Um, and for the longest time, even the company I'm working for now and the previous company, they've never advertised and the companies have been going on for many, many years. The company I work for has been going on, has been around for 38 years, I think, more or less 38 years. Yeah. And my previous company, when I joined at the time, they were five years old, but now they're like 10, 11, 12 years old. So, and they've never advertised. And how do these companies or how do the brokerages st have staying power without having to advertise? It's all word of mouth. It's all referral based. So you'll find a lot of client clusters. You find family clusters within these clients because mom and dad have investments here. The, the children will automatically have investments. The nieces, the nephews, the grandparents. So it's basically family orientated you know, financial planning. Um, and that's how these brokerages have survived over the years. It's all referral based. And that is a great form of actually finding a financial advisor. If you know somebody who has seen someone and they have already established a relationship and this person has looked after the portfolio, you are, you know, you have a referral. You have someone who's been there, who's dealt with this financial planner and, you know, what can go wrong, right? This is someone you trust. This is someone you know. Obviously, referral base is always the best. Then you would find another way of finding a financial advisor or wealth manager would be going directly to the investment companies. So let's say you were listening to um, the red companies advert on TV to say that you be investing for long term and you like their pitch and you think to yourself, maybe I should invest with this company. So some of these investment firms do have internal uh, wealth managers or financial advisors within the companies. So they can, you can then contact, you know, the red company, blue company, green company, yellow company, and, and ask to, to get a financial advisor to come and see you so that, you know, you can, you know, obviously start the financial planning process. You've got some funds to invest and this is what you need. Okay, so those are the three ways of actually finding an IFA, a financial advisor, an agent, a broker, whatever you want to call it. This is, these, are, these are one of the ways of finding one, right? 
So now that you've established that, okay, I need a financial advisor and this is how I'm going to find one. Now I'd like to um, explain the difference between a, an agent that is independent and an agent that represents a specific investment company, okay? So because at the end of the day, you need to know who's sitting in front of you. You need to know, is this an independent financial advisor who's an IFA or is this a tied agent, a person who is contracted to sell products from company X or the red company, all right? So I just want to explain the pros and the cons of each one quickly so that you'll be able to ask these questions. And it's one of the important questions to ask so that you can have an idea of the type of advice you'll be given. All right. Why is this important? Someone who is representing company X or the red company will be biased to that company. All right. And someone who is an independent financial advisor who is also contracted to company X or the red company, but has licensed to sell and is contracted with different at the other different companies so other investment companies as well so they contracted with the red company the blue company the green company the purple company the yellow company right what are the advantages and disadvantages of each right so let's go to the tight agent tight agent is someone who only represents the red company right they will present a quote of the red company they will tell you all the great advantages of being invested at the at the red company they will tell you that they have preferential rates they'll tell you you know they'll give you the bells and whistles of the red company they are agents of the red company they are not allowed to sell any other product from any other company or present any other product from any other company because they are tied to the red company okay the disadvantage there is that well, let's say the advantage there is that they are skilled and they know exactly what they're talking about. Um, but you don't have the full picture of the entire investment, you know, horizon. You don't, you're limited basically to the red company. So whatever he tells you, it is what it is. It's, you know, so who are you to know? How would you know that I would actually get a better rate at the, at the green company or the blue company or the, the platform fees are actually cheaper? the blue company or the green company but because now you're sitting in front of a tied agent it limits him but he's going to do his best to present his portfolio or, or his recommendation the best way he can right to get you to sign on as his client okay so you need to know who you're sitting with first of first question to ask are you independent or are you a tied agent okay tied agent you know you're only limited to that specific investment company and you will be paying whatever platform fees on there, whether they're expensive or not. Um, sometimes you're limited to the fund, um, the funds that are on the platform. Uh, some of these companies have their own funds. And when you compare the performance of the company's funds with the other companies, you might find that the balanced portfolio of this uh, blue company versus the balanced portfolio of the red company, the red company is actually doing better, the fund is performing better than the blue company. But because you've met now agent from blue company, now you just decide, okay, I'm going to sign with blue company and hope I make my money. All right. My advice, well, my opinion would be, no. Rather get someone who is independent, who can give you a proposal and a quotation of different companies and explain the fee structure, the fund performances of each of these different companies so that you are not limited to just the blue company. Okay, then let's go to an IFA, an independent financial advisor. This is a, 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 a broker or financial advisor a wealth manager that is contracted to multiple insurance companies and multiple um, investment firms, right? The advantage of this is that they are not biased to any one specific company, number one. Number two, when they present a proposal to you, right, they are able to um, show you the different platform fees for their different, you know, providers. They're able to show you the different performance um, they're able to show you the um, the fees that they will earn 
um, and then they'll be able to put you in and also they will show you the the fund the range of the funds available within each company um, you might find that the purple company is quite limited in their fund in their range of funds that they offer on their platform because remember a fund is managed by a fund manager fund managers earn a fee all right then you get the actual investment company that earns their own admin fee right so there's fee admin fee uh, for, the, for the company at a management fee for the portfolio manager then you get the broker's fee obviously for you know which is an initial fee and an ongoing fee so all these fees add up at the end of the day and you're just trying to invest your money and make sure your money grows so you need to be you know with an investment company that would offer you the preferential fees for you okay so fees that are not too expensive platform fees that are not too expensive right in the next videos i will definitely uh, teach you guys and tell you what a fund is made out of what a portfolio is made out of the different fee structures when you're looking at a quotation what are you looking at are you looking what 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 what, what are all these numbers what are all these fees i'm going to break that down for you so right now we're just trying to establish who is sitting in front of you? We need to know who this person is, all right? So um, the independent financial advisor has that benefit that they can present multiple companies to you that will give you preferential rates um, for risk products like life policies. Different companies have different rates because they are underwritten um, by different uh, companies. So you might find that with the blue company, your rates based on your profile, you get a much cheaper premium than the blue, than the red company or the yellow company. Or you might find that with the purple company, you actually get an added benefit um, for the same premium. So benefit wise, they are better than the blue company and you're paying the same premium. So it's better than to always sit with an IFA, someone who is independent and someone who can give you an unbiased you know, um, put, um, proposal so that you can make the best decision for yourself. Okay, right. So we've established who's independent and who is tied, right? How do you know that these people are actually registered? All right. So I will, in my description below, I will leave um, a link to the um, previously known as the FSB, the Financial Services Board. They are now the Financial Sector Conduct Authority, the FSCA. The FSCA overlooks and is responsible for the registration of FSPs and um, advisors, all right? So what is an FSP? An FSP is the financial services provider, all right? So the company I work for is the house, so they are the FSP. And everybody under the house has a specific designation. You get the house, which is the FSP, which would be, let's say, for example, Megan's Financial Services, okay, PTOI Limited, all right? On the FSCA website, you need to go there and check that Megan's Financial Services Providers is registered and they have a license, okay, to sell insurance and investments, okay? There's a difference. You get a financial services company and then you get a credit providing company. So in the intermediary services, we don't offer credit, we just offer financial services, okay? So first of all, go onto the website and check. Is this house registered? Do they even exist? Do they have a license? Are they registered? Okay. Then you need to check this financial advisor, this wealth manager that has contacted you. Meg says, okay, um, let's meet up. Um, and I work for Meg's Financial Services. You need to check on the website, is Meg registered? Okay. Meg should have her own license number and code as well. Right. So you go onto the website and you check. On the website, you can also check for debarred agents, okay? So agents that have been removed from the system that are not allowed to give any financial advice. You need to make sure the agent that is sitting in front of you is registered under the FSP and that they are not debarred. If they have been debarred previously, you need to know why. Because an IFA that has been or a, a, an agent or a financial planner that has been debarred can be reinstated, okay? Debarring could be because they didn't meet the minimum requirements within the given time. They um, there was some 
either illegal activities or whatever the case may be you need to find out that the person that is sitting in front of you number one is legit and is from a legit fsp and they are both registered all right then the next thing you need to find out is this person, are they registered for what they are actually selling me? Okay. Are they registered for risk? Are they registered for life insurance? Are they registered for short term? Are they registered for medical aid? Are they registered for investments? You need to find out. Okay. On the, FS, on the FSCA website, you can find all of this information, all right? And if you cannot find the FSP you're looking for or the broker you're looking for, pick up the phone and call them. There is a number. Phone them. Ask them. Is Meg's Financial Services, are they registered? Is Meg a registered representative? Are they qualified? All that information, they will be able to give you all that information, all right? So guys, the message for today is you need to know who is sitting in front of you. You need to know that this person is legit and they're registered. You've worked hard for your money. You've worked hard for everything you have. You don't want to just give it on a silver platter to somebody who's going to swindle you out of everything you've worked hard for. People present themselves. People look good. People smell good. People say the right things. And you think that you can actually trust this person. And if you've watched American Greed, you will see that all all these people that have swindled your Bernie Madox, they were all likable people. They were all charismatic people. They're all people that look good, smell good, drive the fancy cars, gave up this perception that they are great investors. They know what they're doing. How do you even know if they know what they're doing? Do you even know who's sitting in front of you? So that is my message to you today. Do you know who you're dealing with? Do you know who's sitting in front of you? Do you know who they are? It's also important for you as the consumer to do your due diligence. Find out who these people are. Okay? Even if it's a referral, still do your due diligence. Okay? Even if it's, you know, someone referred by someone you trust, do your due diligence. Please, I'm begging you. Okay? So, in my next video, now that we've established that I need financial advice and I know who I'm going to meet, what should you expect in your first meeting with this person? Okay, what should you expect? What type of documents should they present to you that show you who they are? So, in our next video, I'll be breaking those down to you. Thank you for watching my video. And I try not to make these videos too long, but there is so much to say. Um, but if you have any questions, please, down below, comment down below, and we can have a discussion. And if you have any questions, let me know, and we can address those. So, thank you for your time. Thank you <clears throat> for coming onto my channel. Like and subscribe and I'll see you on our next video. Bye.